hello everyone welcome to the next training session and in this session we are going to cover how to carry out security testing with the help of selenium as well as one of the most famous open source tool called z attack proxy so let us have a look at uh, the agenda of uh, this training session what we are going to see today so this is a blog post which i was still drafting and the agenda is available here and i will publish this uh, after this training session so let's see what we would have a look at so first let's understand what is the importance of having security testing on the ci as in continuous integration so security testing or performance testing being non-functional testing are usually usually pushed towards the end of the release and this is actually very late and if we find major security issues at this point of time then it may as well delay the production release and this is what we do not want we want to be able to test security as part of the usual development and continuous integration life cycle and this is what is possible if we have it integrated in ci and this is what we are, what we are going to have a look at now before getting into that uh, let me make one thing very clear that security testing is a very vast field it has lots of tools lots of ways to carry out testing so we are not going to learn all of this today maybe there will be more and more sessions on this but what we are going to have a look at today is how we can use selenium to drive a specific type of security security test um, and on this specific set, we would have a look at something called dynamic application security testing, which is the second pointer here. So, well, what is dynamic application security testing? There are different uh, categories of security testing, and one of them is static security testing, which is, you know, analyzing the application code base and finding out if there are some security issues. This is something which is done by other set of tools. For example, SonarCube, you may have heard of. And what is dynamic application security testing this is when application is running so we are running the application for example example accessing front end of a web applications and finding out you know if we have some security vulnerabilities there now you know as i said that there are lots of tools and what i picked up here is uh, something called zap which is zaratech proxy from owasp if you have not heard of OWSP, it's it's a very uh, big organization which works towards improving the security of softwares. It has lots of documentation on this site. You can go through lots of tools, lots of conferences. Uh, and what we are going to focus here is one specific subset, which is one of the scanning tool uh, mentioned on OWASP website, Zara Tech Proxy. So this is a list of various tools. Uh, which we have here and we would focus on Zadotech proxy. You can download it from here if you go to Zadotech proxy and they download URL and I have already done that for me. There are ways to run it standalone as a client application then you can access the application which you want to subject to security testing and carry out different sorts of attacks like passive and active scans and spiders and so on. And what we would focus here is how we can use Selenium to carry out passive scanning. But now let's talk about what is passive scanning, which we are going to look at here. Passive scanning is that when we are accessing application and we are reading requests and responses uh, happening because of the actions we carry out on the application, but we do not modify them. So we just observe the request and responses without modifying them. And then we figure out if there is something fishy there, if there are some security vulnerabilities, and this is known as passive scanning. So to be very precise, we are focusing on passive, sca passive scanning capabilities using Zap, which is an offering from OWASP, and we have combined this with Selenium here. So it's very, very specific subset. So let us see how we can set up the uh, Zap project so as you can see here there are two maven dependencies which we need uh, i have already got these dependencies on my project here you can see zap client api and zap by the way i would post the link uh, in the description of video uh, to this project so that you can get it from gitlab and uh, github and try it out yourself so this is the initial setup then what we also have to do is we have to start something called zap proxy in a daemon mode so if I go to my Zap 
installation, I have it in uh, applications, OWSP, Zap, contents, dot Java. So I'm on this file, uh, this folder, and then I start Zap as dot Zap dot SH. Daemon, the host is localhost and port is 8080. This you can specify whichever you want. And there's no API key needed here, so it's disabled. So I will just start Zap in headless mode. So you would see here, uh, up here, Zap appears here. Now what else do we have to do? So now what we have to do is we have to instruct Chrome to also run on the same host and port on which Zap is running. And this is a setup which is done on the Selenium instantiation. And this is on my base class known as base class on demand driver set up with proxy. Now, if you see here, I have a driver instance here and on the getter method, when driver is not available, what I do is I specify these as proxy host and proxy port. And if you remember, these are the same options which we used while instantiating or starting the zap. You can see it here, yeah, it says zap is listening on localhost and 8080. And then what I do is I specify the proxy address using the zap proxy host and proxy port. And then I specify something called a zap proxy. This is selenium um, yeah, proxy object. And then I set HTTP proxy as well as SSL proxy to the proxy address, which is nothing but the zap proxy. And I'm ignoring the certificate errors here. And I set the capability as the proxy which we defined here and then we start chrome driver with this chrome option so what this whole piece of code does is it sets up uh, chrome web driver using zap proxy and let's see what we could have a look at next so we are done with the selenium setup as in web driver setup then let's have a look at something called the base class which would be used by a different test here so the base class here is a uh, base security class, which is extending the Chrome, um, sorry, which is extending the base class on demand driver setup proxy we saw a while ago. So let's see what's happening in the base security class. On the base security class, we have defined different ways to uh, categorize the errors. For example, we have a method here called check risk count and on the zap, tool itself we have different sorts of errors as well. some errors are high prior priority some are medium low information and so on and this is something which we are going to capture here so what this method does is it takes an url which is application url and on the basis of this application url we filter whatever alerts we receive and then we find out if that alert belongs to risk category high medium and so on for example, when we get an alert here, and if it belongs to this category high, then we just increment count by one. We carry out the similar similar operations for all of the different uh, risk profiles here. What we do in the end is we count all of the different risk which we got, and then we find out if this is zero. If it is zero, then this precondition will not fail. But uh, yeah, if it is not zero, so this condition would fail and then we would have an error appear on the run we would see in a while which would list down all of these risk count as high, medium, low and information which we would have received if total risk count is not equal to zero. What we are also doing on this setup is we are waiting for passive scan to complete uh, because sometimes it takes time to scan to get over. So the API here is from, as you can see, from um let's go to the definition yes client api which is coming from za proxy and we enable all scanners by default actually as soon as we start the z attack proxy it would start the passive scanner so we may not have to do this and then we wait till we have got all of the responses so that they can be scanned uh, what else we are doing here is yeah we are generating a scanner report so Along with the usual test report, we would have uh, a ZAD attack proxy report, which we would see in a while. And this report is also generated here using the client API, which we have got from ZAD attack proxy. What I'm doing here is I'm just pushing this file to my target directory and I named it as zapsecurity-report.html. You can name it 
however you like. Now let's see what we have next on the agenda. So we have seen the base security setup. Yeah, now let's see the sample test. So we have our yeah, sample security test here. And if you see, it is extending the base security, which we had a look at a while ago. So the sample security is our test class. Quite simple, we are scanning our registration page here, but which application are we going to use for scanning is also important. So please do not run this sort of tool or this setup on any application. Please use the application which you know you are allowed to run a scanner on. What I have done here is I have picked up one juice shop, which is a sample application from uh, uh, from OWASP, so it, it is okay to use this. This is one uh, simple juice shop from OWASP, and this could be subjected to security testing. And this is what we are going to do. So what we have here is we pick up the registration URL, we get this URL, and then we check the risk count. So let let me run this and see what happens. So the application is launched here. This is the home page of the juice shop. Now we have scanner also running and we would see a result shortly. Yep, so run is over. Let me go to the test uh, run. It, it did not print anything here, but let us see our test report. I'm not sure what went wrong here. Or oh, let me do one thing. Let me um, keep this in uh, debug mode and let's see here what risk count we get because this test should should have ideally failed. So let's see. Hold set up once again. Proxy. Yes. So this is also fine. This is fine. Proxy is also running here. Let's have a scan. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Let's run this once again. <laughs> hmm. Yep, then it comes here and then I first start yep seeing the count. Yes, total risk count is 57. Okay, yep, this is how it should have been. Uh, now, if I have a look at the test run uh, here, you can see the high risk count is zero, but we have lots of medium, low, and informational risk. And what test run also says that we should check the, you know, the overall report. Now, let's go to this report. Um, I will launch this report locally and see what happened there. So this is the report. Let's open it in, yeah, Firefox. Yeah, so you can have a look at the test um, report here and these are all of the issues which are found uh, for the URL which we subjected to security testing which is this URL and I can do control F yeah and you know you see the issues found on this URL and also the other URLs which corresponds to the page which we are accessing here now this is just executing you know one set of run with one set of url imagine you have written lots of selenium test cases so what you can do is uh, you can just plug in this pro proxy and go to your security uh, go to your usual functional test and carry out the operations which you do and just check what uh, security scanner or the zap finds out so we do not have to carry out all of these navigation operations manually because we have selenium test or the selenium functional test we can use them to plug it in uh, in the security testing so this is the biggest advantage of uh, using selenium along with the zap here um, now what else do we have to cover let's see mm, so we have seen the report yeah i, I would also post some of the references uh, some of the urls uh, some of the online tutorials i found which were useful for me to find out all of this information uh, but it was still quite complicated because they were all scattered so i hope you find this tutorial useful uh, 
there are still some areas of improvement for example when we are scanning uh, the um, application we should be able to ignore a couple of uh, urls for example if you see here you know we we don't want to um, scan cdns cloudflare and so on we only want to scan our application so maybe this is an exercise for you please have a look at uh, the api which we have from zap and try to find out how we can ignore um, you know scanning urls which are not really related to the application which we are testing now this this was only about the passive scanning there, there is also active scanning and spidering i would cover them on uh, next session next video uh, but if you have time please have a look at those and see how you can incorporate those into your uh, testing uh, did i miss something according to the agenda no i did not yeah, so this is all for this session and if you find it useful then uh, please uh, give it a thumbs up and uh, please subscribe to my channel and uh, happy learning bye bye